Hey, what's up and welcome back to another live stream with Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're unboxing the Gigabyte G5. Now, this of course is going to be a very comprehensive live stream unboxing. So that means we're going to be uh, testing the performance of this laptop. We're going to test the display out. We're going to take the bottom of the chassis off. We're going to test the laptop for flex. We're going to play some games. We're going to do some benchmarks. And at the end, we're going to summarize everything. And in addition, we're also gonna be putting timestamps along the bottom of this video. So you can jump around to whatever area of the live stream you want to check out most. We're also gonna be comparing this Gigabyte G5 against some of the other most competitive laptops around the 1000 to $1,300 range. So give or take 100 to $200. Um, and the other question obviously is, should you buy this RTX 4060 laptop versus say an older generation RTX 3060, maybe a 3050 Ti? Um, that might have a better display or better build quality or something like that. So we're gonna dive into some of those comparison questions as well. This is awesome. I can't wait to check it out. This is probably the best bang for the buck laptop that I have seen, at least the potential bang for the buck, but we don't really know yet. We only have a 75 watt GPU, an RTX 4060 in here. So it's not the uh, most ideal TDP RTX 4060. Now this laptop is also very thin and very light and very portable. So you gotta keep that in mind as well. It's, it's a much smaller laptop than the previous versions of the Gigabyte G5, about 22% smaller. And it's thinner, it's lighter, and it's certainly more portable. It's very small bezels around the display as well. This is the uh, secondary box. There's another box that this came with. I bought this off of Newegg, and there are links in the description down below if you want to pick this guy up or check the latest pricing on it, because the pricing on this is gonna shift around. I'm expecting this to eventually go on sale for like 800, 900, maybe even as low as $700 during Black Friday, a year or two from now. Um, so this thing's definitely gonna be going up and down in price quite a lot, um, but it's a 15.6 inch full HD 144 Hertz display. Um, and you can see the box is actually kind of nice. You see that? It's got a Gigabyte G5 logoing on it. And um, let's talk about the potential specs that this has. Here is my laptop list. You can shop around and compare tons of different laptops on here, literally uh, over 100, 133 different configurations now are on this list. The best thing you can do is find your price target. Over here on the left, I'm gonna set an upward price target of $1,300, okay? So now we have every laptop under $1,300 here, and I'm gonna sort by pricing, and I'm gonna do cheapest, okay? So our cheapest laptops, we have the MSI GF63, the Cyborg 15, uh, Acer Nitro 5, Gigabyte G5, that's basically the same version of this laptop except it has an RTX 4050 for $100 less. So you can save $100 by going with that one. Um, this is the version of the laptop that we bought, uh, that we have with us today. So it's got 144 Hertz full HD display with an i5-12500H, so last gen CPU, RTX 4060 with 75 watts of GPU TDP, eight gigs of DDR4-3200 memory and a 512 gig SSD. I like that they have a larger SSD in this one for this price point. Sometimes it's only 256 uh, for the budget models, but only eight gigs of RAM might be a, a severe limiter in games today, but we're gonna find out because we're gonna do several different games today. We've got uh, uh, Cyberpunk, we've got Hogwarts, which is extremely memory intensive and VRAM intensive. And uh, we've got a bunch of other games too. Apex Legends, CSGO, um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and I'm trying to think of Witcher 3. So we're gonna do a bunch of different games today. Uh, and then of course we're gonna run Time Spy and Cinematch R23. So in terms of how this stacks up, I think that this G5 is gonna trounce the Cyborg 15 and GF63, I think. Um, just because these only have 45 watt RTX 4050 and 4060s in them. So this automatically has Almost double the wattage, not quite double the wattage, but that's a pretty significant difference. Uh, and then I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping the display quality in this is better, but I don't know yet. We haven't done the test yet. We're gonna find out today if the display quality is better or not. Uh, and then I think some really good contenders for potential better value for this laptop uh, is gonna be 
like the Acer Nitro 5, if you can get one with a higher quality to screen, like this Nitro 5 has a 300 nits full HD, 165 hertz display with a bit of a higher end processor uh, and it's 1279. So it's a quite a big bump up in price, $180 more, but that may be worth it if it, you're getting you know, a better quality display and, a, and it has 16 gigs of RAM, so you don't have to upgrade that after the fact, that's nice. So those two upgrades might be worth it. Um, and there are links on here if you want to be able to buy almost any of these laptops. Uh, if they're on this list, usually there's links to be able to buy them, but some of them are still not available. So in terms of uh, best competitors right now, um, I, there was another one that was really interesting and it was just delivered today. Let me change the price point and raise it up just by a little bit. Um, it is the... Zephyrus G14, where are you? Uh, well, the, here's another one, the MSI Pulse 15. This one's also gonna be a very interesting and competitive laptop because it's got a QHD, uh, I believe 240 hertz display for 1499. Uh, if you pay a little bit extra, you also get an i7 processor and 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. So you get multiple upgrades with the Pulse 15. So for 1500, this one, is uh, packing a lot of interesting parts in it, and it's a higher watt. It's supposed to be a 140 watt RTX 4060, so you, you get increased wattage, better display, better SSD, better RAM, um, and it's DDR5 5200 RAM too, so this one's really a higher performance laptop for $1499 with a much better screen. So I think, I think this one, I ordered this one, I'll be doing an unboxing of this one and a review of this one as well, so uh, you can just hang tight and we'll get that this one also reviewed, but um, this one has tremendous potential. At the $1,500 price point, this is the top pick for me right now based on specs alone. But uh, we'll have to see exactly how everything shakes out. The, this is another one that just got delivered to me today, the Zephyrus G16. Um, we're gonna be doing a live unboxing. I don't think it's gonna be tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, sometime very soon in the next few days, we're gonna do the Zephyrus G16 with a 4060, 120 watt, 16 gigs of DDR4, 3200, 512 gig SSD, full HD plus 165 hertz, 100% sRGB. So a better display, higher power 4060, i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM for $350 more. So it's you're paying a big chunk more at this, at this price, it's like 25, 30% more in money, but you're also getting some of those upgrades. So this is another very competitive and fairly compelling option, but for $50 more, a QHD display seems pretty attractive to me on that Pulse 15, right? I don't know. Uh, so there's a lot of different options right now in this price range target, uh, but we're gonna find out, can I recommend this guy today? So let's, let's freaking find out, right? Okay, so here's the box. We've got the laptop inside. It's got these foam packaging. Here's the laptop. It'll be packaged very similar to this when you get it. So uh, I think this is gonna be very protective packaging. And what else do we got in here? We've got these uh, set of manuals. Um, let's take a look at these real quick. Actually, I have not looked at this at all. So right here is an extra screw. It looks like maybe like an SSD screw. So you could use this to uh, probably mount a second M.2 slot uh, SSD is my guess. I don't know why else you'd have that. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it, it's for if uh, you lose a screw in the under chassis, but it's probably for the M.2 screws. So our warranty, it's a one year limited warranty on the battery. Pretty sure it's a one year warranty in general. All right, and uh, this I believe is designed to go uh, under your M.2 SSD if you upgrade it to keep it flush. I think it's, you know, you pair these two things together for your SSD upgrade. And then right here we have our Gigabyte Quick Start Guide. Has some basic information. So overall, this laptop is chock full of potential. Let's let's pull off the cover and see what it actually looks like now. So here's the laptop right here. And it has this, out of the box, it has this plastic cover on it. Opening it up here now. Shwam. Okay, so it has this 
kind of felt cover as well as a microfiber cover. So you get double coverage on the inside of the laptop, which is cool. And then we got this plastic cover. They really are um, all about protecting the laptop, which is nice. So a quick evaluation of the laptop here. We've got uh, plastic on the keyboard deck, a soft touch keyboard with a number pad and lots of extra functionality keys. Uh, we've got a webcam here at the top. We've got a, it feels like a glass touchpad. I, I don't know if it's plastic or glass, but it's as smooth as a glass touchpad, which is very surprising at this price point. Almost all laptops at this price point are plastic. This is a metal top lid, not a plastic top lid, a metal top lid, I think. Or is it plastic? It looks like it's metal, but I think it might actually be plastic. It feels like metal, but sounds like plastic. So I'm not sure. It's probably plastic based on the feel, but it's got a nice coating and texture to it. This is a very thin laptop and it's very lightweight, I would say, overall. I think it's less than five pounds. And we have ports on all three sides and a pretty good selection of ports. We're gonna go over the ports in a little bit here. Let's take a look at the power brick before we continue. So here's the power brick. It is not that long, about four feet long for this power cable. And then we'll, pop, we'll check out the actual power adapter. This thing is small. It is a very tiny power adapter, uh, and that's gonna be really great for portability once again, pairing, pairing the small laptop size with the small power adapter is gonna make this thing very mobile. Um, probably the most mobile laptop I've unboxed so far this year, because the power adapter is quite a bit smaller than even what you get on the Blade series. Here we go, here's some comparisons that we can, we can do side by side, all right? There's the Gigabyte G5. Here's the Blade 16. Whoa, the Blade 16 is actually bigger. Yeah, so we're lined up in the back, lined up on the side. The Blade 16 hangs over the edge, but the Gigabyte G5 is just slightly wider. So it's almost the exact same size as the Razer Blade. That shows you how efficient Gigabyte has been about reducing the bezels. This has almost no bezels um, around the sides. The top has a little bit, the bottom has a bit of a chin. But uh, still, they've really done a, a much more efficient job of making the Gigabyte G5 series so much more portable, which is gonna be a lot more attractive for people that need something on the go. All right, so here's the Strix G18. So it's a, you can see the monstrosity difference here. It's a huge difference on the width and the depth and the thickness too. The Gigabyte is gonna be thinner. And the last one we'll compare with is going to be the Alienware M16. So another 16 inch laptop, which is almost the same screen size as what we have in the Gigabyte. And it is, you know, two inches less deep and about a quarter inch or a third of an inch less wide. So this thing is definitely on the mo uh, more portable side of things when it comes to laptops, which is great to see. You know, here's, here's a laptop that's very competitive with this laptop. It's the Lenovo IdeaPad 3. And you can see the Gigabyte is also smaller than the Lenovo IdeaPad 3. Now this has a 3050 in it, I think, or maybe a 3050 Ti, I can't remember off the top of my head. But it's, um, I picked this up for 600. I still haven't finished the benchmarking for this guy. That's why I have it still. But uh, yeah, so this thing is, is definitely on the super portable side. It's very important to understand how this laptop lines up against the competition, especially previous generations. Nvidia and their silly marketing naming schematics really messed everything up when they bumped everything up by 10 this year with the RTX 4000. Before we turn this on, let's take the bottom off. Nvidia with their silliness this year, they bumped the, the naming scheme of all of the laptop GPUs up by 10. Uh, this means the 4090 is the best laptop GPU this year, and it's priced like the 3080 Ti was when it launched, okay? The 3070 Ti is priced the same way that the RTX 4080 is priced, and the 30, uh, 4070 is priced the same way that the 3060 was priced, or at least pretty close, maybe a little bit more than the 3060. And then this 4060 is being priced very similar to what the 3050 Ti was when it was launched. So 
Uh, this is the fourth best GPU for the year. The RTX 4060 is the fourth best GPU. And in the previous generation, the fourth best GPU was the 3050 Ti. So if you want a, a direct product on a tier by tier basis, the 3050 Ti is the one you probably want to match this one up with primarily, but it's very fair to compare it with the RTX 3060 as well, because it is a 60 series. So uh, it's it's totally legitimate to pair both of, both of those up, I think. From a price to performance perspective, I'm going to focus on 3050 Ti as the main comparison, because they're both fourth tier and they're both priced comparatively. But... Uh, but yeah, I would like to see that this actually outperforms an RTX 3060 at 75 watts as well, at a minimum. I don't know if this will be able to beat a 3060 at full wattage levels or not. We'll have to see. Um, but I'm anticipating that if the 3060 is at 75 watts and this is at 75 watts, we ought to be seeing some nice performance gains. Now, I'm just using a Phillips head screw to take these screws out and... Everything is going really well. I can see some nice heat pipes coming through the ventilation and there's a lot of ventilation on the bottom of this. So what the cooling is like on the inside of this laptop, because that's the biggest question in my mind is what kind of TDP and performance can we get? And I'm curious why they only limited it to 75 Watts. Now uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to go ahead and take this. We're going to take this bottom panel off to do that. I need to get it started. I usually use like a picking tool here or something uh, to just get into the edge. Uh, sometimes I have to use the separation prying tool. And I do use this iFixit toolkit. There's a link to the toolkit that I use to take laptops apart in the description down below. Uh, and yeah, I do recommend the toolkit. It works really well. So I see a little gap over here. I don't know if I'll be able to get into it or not. Just trying to find a good starting place with these laptop chassis can be difficult sometimes. Okay, so right in the front right corner is a pretty good spot for me to get started. And usually once you get the thing going, it comes right up. You don't want to start... Okay, so to be clear, you don't want to start in the back. The back is actually not... You can't even go in there, like overlaps. So you got to start in the front of this laptop if you want to take it apart. And I do also want to mention into the AM. There are t-shirts, there's links in the description for these t-shirts. If you're looking for some graphic t-shirts that are high quality, I definitely recommend them. And if you do use the link in the description, you get 10% off and a small portion of whatever you buy goes to help support me. But I honestly, I love their shirts because they're just really high quality shirts. I've had this shirt for a couple of years and it looks really great still. Yeah, and I love the cut and fabric too. Like they cut, they, they fit my body. The back does not want to pop up. There we go, okay. Ooh, we got crucial memory in here. Interesting. Uh, that's some high quality stuff. And look at this too. We have another spot open for an M.2. It's immediately available for upgrade. We've got a 512 gig solid state drive here. It was, it's, it's like K-I-O-X-I-A. So like Kioxa. Yeah, it's like Kioxa is the SSD brand, but the RAM brand is a Crucial brand, which is very interesting. Crucial is a high-end memory, so it's nice to see them putting in some nice RAM on this you know, more budget-oriented laptop. So we've got a Crucial 8 gig DDR4 3200 sodium with CL22. If you want to get a matching stick, you could just buy one 8 gig Crucial stick uh, and you'll be able to get your exact match. And you could obviously just pop it right in there. For Wi-Fi, we are using an Intel AX1211. No, AX211, NGW. So Intel AX211, NGW. So we've got our GPU right here. We've got an i5, i5 CPU here. We've got one dedicated heat pipe to that i5 that goes around to this exhaust. And then we have a big shared heat pipe between the CPU and GPU that comes around to this exhaust. This is gonna be used to help cool our VRMs and that's gonna also transfer some heat over to these heat pipes, so that's good. Um, and then we've got two dedicated heat pipes to the GPU over here. And of course, all of these metal pads will also transfer some of this heat over to these heat pipes, but it's not gonna be that 
it's not going to be as good as having a direct heat pipe over them. So we'll have to see what the temperatures are like in this machine. It's only a 75 watt GPU, so we don't need too many heat pipes. I think this will be enough to keep the GPU at a reasonable temperature. Um, and this is an i5 CPU, so that means less cores and threads than other like i7 or i9 CPUs. So I'm thinking this will be enough cooling to at least get us decent performance. But, you know, this thing is a budget laptop at $1,100, so I'm not expecting extreme levels of performance. As long as it delivers satisfactory levels of performance for the price, I'll be happy. We've got a 54 watt hour battery right here. And uh, it's an interesting, it's kind of like an L shape. Our two speakers are on the sides here, two two watt speakers. So these are bottom firing. And I wouldn't expect too much on the sound quality side on this machine, unfortunately. Um, that's pretty much gonna be the case with any budget laptop that I've ever tested. This laptop's overall pretty, pretty easy to take apart and put back together. Yeah, this thing does look nice. This, the one thing I will say is the old Gigabyte G5 just looked like it was from a previous generation of laptops. This one still looks a little bit outdated in some ways, but it is much more modern in the general design. The aesthetics on the, the imprinted on the top of the lid here, this looks much more modern. And it's, the keyboard still looks like a little bit older, but like the touchpad also has accenting to it. So there's, I don't know, it's, it's pretty, the design is I think much cleaner looking and looks classier, which is great to see. I love that. Here we are. And you can already see the display. The display quality does appear to me as a higher quality display than what was on the Katana, but not by a lot. I have not done the display test and I'm very curious to see what the display quality is on this machine. Cause that really is going to be a big factor for which laptop people end up picking in these lower end laptops, uh, like the more budget oriented and mid-range laptops like if you can get decent performance and have a better quality display then that's a huge boon i think in the budget segment i have uh so one thing i want to point out right at the beginning is i had issues with getting the the control center to work for me i had to uninstall the default control center and download the new one from gigabytes support page and then install it. And then I was able to get in and use the control center. So it's very important to know that. Now, if you press FN and press the exclamation point, that turns on max fans for you. Automatic, like it's a quick hotkey, which is pretty sweet to know. And then I believe uh, FN plus the three switches your power mode. So you can go from uh, like high performance, entertainment, battery savings, uh, which tries to switch you out of your NVIDIA GPU um, and then also back to high performance. Now, this keyboard feels very nice. I think the keyboard is, uh, it's got nice spacing overall. We've got tons of functionality. We have a full row of F1 through 12 keys. We've got a full size number pad as well. Now, and full size arrow keys, right? So this has got a lot of things going for it. Uh, the backlight does light up all of the secondary functions. The key thing about this keyboard that I like is just that it's got the full functionality and the key travel is decent. It doesn't feel like a super premium keyboard, but the functionality is there. And when you're looking at a budget machine, you want easy to type on all the functionality there if you can. We've got dedicated home and page up, page down. We've got the number pad, that's the full size, that's the default formatting. We've got a delete key, a backspace key. Um, I like that. We just don't really have uh, much for play pause type of keys. So like our media keys are not there. And I also do not see any keys to turn on or turn off the keyboard backlight feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop into the, into the control center here. And I'm gonna change the backlight so you guys can see the different colors. You've got a bunch of different color options. It is an RGB keyboard. So you can go to like yellow, you can go to uh, green, different shades of green. You can go to more like a turquoise uh, and then kind of a greenish bluish and then go into blues and then to purples and pinks and orange and red. And now we're coming back around again, back to the green. So I'm just gonna leave it on blue. I think it looks pretty good. Um, and I think that the, the keyboard and is, is an overall a solid keyboard for a budget laptop, so I'll say. Okay, uh, touchpad. 
the touchpad is a good size. It's bigger than the Katana touchpad. Like it's taller and wider than the Katana touchpad. And the texture, I think it's plastic, but it feels more like a glass touchpad. It slides smoothly across the 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 surface, it's hard for me to tell. I think it's plastic, pretty sure it's plastic, but it is very smooth sliding, which is great to see. And the click is good overall. You can't click at the very top very much, but all around you can click very easily. Uh, inside of here, I can turn the, the keyboard backlight off inside of the control center as well. So there is that. All right, so here's our, uh, here's our software to control the laptop. You can see that you can activate and deactivate the camera. And there is a hotkey. You can press FN and uh, F10. And that can activate and deactivate the camera at a touch, a quick touch. Um, you've got four different power modes. You have performance, you have entertainment, power savings, and quiet mode. Um, and power savings mode, I believe, tries to permanently turn off the NVIDIA GPU um, as long as you're in that mode. So it says applications using the NVIDIA GPU will be shut down in power savings mode. Switch to power savings mode, uh, click OK or cancel. Now, I believe this does not have advanced Optimus. So I believe we're using just regular old Optimus for this, which will mean that we're gonna get better performance with an external uh, display, which, and, which is kind of a bummer. I believe that's the case. Let me, let me double check that. Uh, but as far as I know, all indications are that this is regular Optimus. So popping over to Gigabyte's website here. And yeah, I'm not seeing anything indicating advanced Optimus, um, so which means almost always that it's regular Optimus. And as far as I know, there's not a MUX switch in this laptop. So what you're dealing with is a slight reduction in overall um, performance in CPU bound games like CSGO. So I'm expecting the performance in CSGO to be a bit lower. So that's the basic. If you wanna change the keyboard backlighting, it's inside of here. You can pick the color that you want the keyboard to be, and you can turn the brightness off and on inside the software here. Uh, and you can also set macros up with the cons control center, which is nice. Uh, and you also have battery charge options. So you can charge the battery only up to 70%. Um, only, so only charge the battery when under 70% and stop at 80%. Um, and you can also do maximum battery charge, so you can go all the way to 100%, or you can do custom, so you can set it to whatever you want it to be. Um, and so this is, this is great for making your battery last longer. You can essentially, like lithium ion batteries should be good for many years of usage if they're not kept at 100%. So I would highly recommend setting this to uh, 80% if you're gonna use the battery often, uh, unless you're discharging the battery every single day, then maybe 100% is okay. But if you're gonna be only occasionally using it, keeping it at 80% is, is okay. Uh, the best battery percentage to keep it at is 50%. If you're not you're gonna use the battery at all, just keep it at 50% and the battery should in theory last much, much longer. So the laptop display is connected to the Intel GPU. So that's gonna show us that we're, we're not using a MUX right now. It looks like the mini display port on the back is connected to the NVIDIA GPU, but we're not seeing, there is an HDMI on this and there are also two USB-Cs. I don't know if the USB-Cs have display port 1.4, but they are gen, they are USB 3.2s. So for sure the mini display port will bypass Optimus and that's probably the display port um, that you're gonna wanna use because especially if you want a high refresh rate display, the HDMI is only a 2.0 on this. So you're not gonna be able to do ultra high refresh rate QHD monitors with the HDMI. You're gonna to wanna to use the mini display port and you can use an adapter uh, from mini display port to HDMI if you need to. So we're gonna use my Spider 5 Elite. I've already installed it and got it set up. This is, this is a tool that's designed to test the quality of dis laptop displays or really any kind of monitor display. We're gonna do gamut and brightness. Okay, so here we are. We got 62% sRGB. Keep in mind that my color gamut checker tool underestimates by about 10%, right? So it's really closer to about 70% sRGB, 46% Adobe RGB, and 46% of the P3 color gamut. And then for brightness, 
we got 15 nits on the low end and 261 nits on the high end, which is about 40 nits brighter than what the Katana had. So yeah, this display is better than what the MSI Katana had. And the contrast ratio is also better, 840 to one. It's not an amazing contrast ratio, but it's still good. It's, it's better, I think the Katana only had like 720, I believe. Overall, this is a better display. It is a higher color gamut display, but not by a lot. I think it's only a few percentage points better on the color gamut area but the brightness being 40 nits brighter is gonna be more noticeable. In general, I would say if you're gonna be looking for a higher quality display, you really would ideally shoot for 100% sRGB coverage. And you probably can get that if you're willing to go down to a, like a 3050 Ti graphics card. At this price point at $1,100, you can get 100% sRGB coverage, maybe at $1,000 right? For $1,000, you might be able to get 100% sRGB coverage in the right laptop, but you're not going to be able to get that, I don't think, with a RTX 4000 series laptop right now that I know of. So we'll have to see. Overall, the display results are mixed. They're not as good as I would ideally love, that's for sure, but at least they are a bit better than 220 something nits, right? 260 is a lot better, and the contrast ratio being better bodes well. So we want to be in performance, that's correct, and we want to be in maximum fans. You guys can hear the fans. They're not as loud as most of these other gaming laptops, but I'll, I'll try turning them off and on a couple times for you to hear the difference. I'm gonna hold the camera about, uh, I'm gonna hold the mic about 10 inches in front of the laptop, okay? Here we go. So overall, the fans are quieter. Um, I'm not sure what the automatic fans would ramp up to, but at least on maximum fans, it's really not excruciatingly loud. I mean, it will be noticeable in a quiet room. If I were to guess, I'm guessing like 53 decibels, somewhere in that range, 53, 54 maybe. Okay, so what do we get? 14,600. Now, I owned for two years a Lenovo Legion 7i that I paid 3,000. That guy got 15,000. So this $1,100 laptop is doing the same amount as what my $3,500 laptop from two years ago did. Pretty insane, the, the advancement in technology making the best of previous generations essentially obsolete. It's, kind of, it's pretty crazy. Not obsolete, but almost. I mean, it's not, yeah, it's, it, it, yeah it devalues, the, it certainly devalues my very expensive laptop. So that's a pretty good score though for I believe that's a good score for an i5. Here's our 10 minute run start. I'm noticing that our temps are getting pretty dang high. Wow, we're pulling 91 watts. Holy moly. That's pretty insane. Our temperatures are going up there too. But it's nice to see the gigabytes letting this sucker fly. Like, like it's flying. It's flying really high. Now these temperatures are pretty, is pretty high. Keep in mind, they are within the Intel rated spec temperatures, but in general, I do prefer my CPUs to be in the 85 uh, to 90 degree range on the upper end. Um, so I'm curious to see what this ends up throttling down to, or if it ends up throttling down at all. Cause right now it's basically thermal throttling rather than power limit throttling. Power limit throttling is where you say, don't go beyond a certain wattage and then you're, so you're basically being limited by how much power goes into the CPU. When you're thermal throttling, it means that we're, sho we're shoving as much power into the CPU as it can take. And then we're hitting that thermal threshold instead of a power limit threshold. So if you wanted to uh, prevent the temperatures from going as high in this laptop, what you would do is you would install something like Throttle Stop or Intel XTU. And by installing Intel XTU or Throttle Stop, you can set the power limit to go to say, uh, 70 watts instead of 75, or maybe 65 watts. Um, and then your temperatures will not be as high. All right, for our core clocks, we are doing 3.9 gigahertz on our four performance cores and 2.99 gigahertz on our eight E cores. So that means this is a total of a 12 core CPU with 16 threads. 
which is a pretty good amount of CPU threads. And we're hitting decent clock speeds on this thing too at 3.9 gigahertz. Like you could definitely do video editing on this. You could definitely do uh, CPU intensive things. And it would be basically similar in performance to what I had in my Legion 7i, this really expensive laptop. Uh, from previous generations. We, I mean, it, it's gonna be similar-ish. It's gonna go lower, I think, with the 10 minute score because, you know, we're gonna be running into thermal throttling. Our score is gonna be a little bit lower uh, overall because in the initial burst, it's gonna be higher until we hit that thermal threshold. We've averaged 72 watts through the, G, uh, th through the CPU. And I imagine if you were to repaste this, you might get even better performance because um, we're thermal throttling here. So if you added a laptop cooler, and you repasted this with some higher end CPU paste and GPU paste, you would be looking at lower temperatures and therefore you'd be able to push the clock speeds even higher. Cause we're not running at the maximum clock speeds for this CPU, not quite. I'm pretty sure it can go over four gigahertz on the P cores uh, when it's under a all core load. And the E cores could probably go to like 3.2 or 3.3 or something. So I'm pretty sure you're looking at significant potential performance improvements through repasting and um, like adding a laptop cool. Okay, so 13,733 for our 10 minute Cinebench R23 run. That's very good for a budget laptop, I think. All right, so here is the webcam. It's definitely grainy, not that high of quality. Yeah, even after the post-processing, the quality is still pretty meh. You're gonna, you're gonna end up basically using, you're gonna wanna only use that in like tiny window mode, you know, just for people to be able to see who you are. We are at 100% volume, and I'm gonna be holding this about 10 inches in front of the laptop, okay? So these are downward firing speakers, which means that uh, you would ideally want to be using this laptop uh, to watch stuff or to play stuff on a table so it can bounce off of the surface. Okay, that was not amazing. Uh, we're gonna do Half-Life by Faded Aeon. Oh. All right, that one actually didn't sound as bad as the first one. The first one was just like very bassy and it was all broken up. The second song uh, mainly focuses on like highs and mids. And since it's only two, two watt tweeters, basically, it sounds a lot better in music like that. Let's try uh, La La La, which has a lot of vocals. So here we go. Okay, so that was um, decent again in the mids and highs. The focus on that song is mainly on the mids and highs, and that's a bit, bit better. Overall, I would give it probably um, four out of 10 on the speaker side, maybe 3.5, 3.5 to four in that range. Not looking at amazing speakers. That's what I would expect at this price point though, right? You're paying, you pay for what you get when it comes to speaker quality. Typically it's one of those premium things. You have to pay a bit extra for if you want to have high quality speakers. Okay, so right now we're doing 300. Obviously, this is going to be able to play CSGO above 144 frames per second pretty easily. But CSGO is fairly easy to run. It's an older game, so. I wonder how powerful a 35 watt 4070 will be. That's interesting, Sonic. It's going to, it's, it's probably not going to be awful given the new ADA architecture, but it's still not going to be ideal, I don't think, you know? Um, so... Yeah, but I mean, if you're talking about like, say the 40, I think there's a 45 watt, 
4060 in the Arrow 14, um, or like in the Cyborg 15, or uh, the GF63 has a 45 watt. I'm not sure which laptop has a 35 watt 4070. I haven't heard of a laptop with that low of a wattage. I don't know. Um, for tablets, yeah, for tablets, that would be a very high level of performance for sure. So um, it looks like we're doing close to 300 FPS. Let's see the results here just in just a moment. So we got 262 FPS at 1080p high settings in CSGO. <laughs> we're gonna try everything on maximum to start with. We're gonna do frame generation enabled. We're gonna do everything on quality. So everything is, ma <laughs> everything is maxed, full screen 1080p. Okay, so here's our GPU temperature at the bottom. It's 63 right now, 64. All right, so let's go ahead and run Benchmark. Here we go. Which, which laptop would have this? Like a Katana maybe? GF66. <sighs> I don't know. Uh, let me just do a quick evaluation. So we are, we are hitting our 75 watt target right now in our C, uh, GPU. Our CPU is doing 47 watts, which is pretty good. Our temps on the CPU are in the high 80s and are, just, I guess, bouncing around low 90s and then the 80s. And then our GPU temps are 78 degrees which is all right. It's not ideal. I'd prefer this, the, I prefer the GPU temp to be a little bit lower than that, like in the low seventies or high sixties, but still our average FPS was 85. Okay. So we're turning off frame generation. We're going to turn off DLSS and we're going to turn off ray tracing. Okay. So everything's on ultra now, all ultra settings, but no extra Nvidia features. Let's see what we get now. The 4070 was way colder. Yeah, it was. That that Katana cooled that laptop so well. Like the cooling in that was phenomenal. I'm, I'll start the average. It's not, the average didn't start from the beginning, but um, still. So no DLSS, native 1080p. We're getting some good frames here. 60, it's very playable. So is it worth going for a 4070 instead of a 3070 laptop? Um, a 30, it all comes down to price versus performance, okay? That's the key thing to keep in mind. Um, and the other key thing is that the RTX 4000 series has frame generation, the RTX 3000 series does not. Now, in terms of raw rasterization performance, the 4070 and 3070 are in a very similar ballpark. It's not a huge gap there. Um, oh, we're getting stuttering. I wonder what's causing our stuttering right now. Our, our GPU wattage is dropping. Our CPU wattage, did we get unplugged or something? We are still plugged in. What's causing the stuttering? Oh, snap. I wonder what was causing that to stutter right there. Now, let's just see what we get if we turn everything on low, all right? We're gonna turn everything on low with frame generation on quality. I'm curious what we get. Everything's on low except textures. Uh, we don't know exactly what was causing that stuttering. It looks like we might still be getting that stuttering to happen. Yeah, we are. Looks like we're gonna to need to restart. Did you see that DLSS 3 was unlocked on the 20 and 30 series cards? Cyberpunk was first. Interesting, no, I have not. I'd be very curious to check that out. Um, <laughs> And I'm curious to see if the gains are the same because NVIDIA claimed that something was different about the ADA architecture that they couldn't do it with the RTX 2000 or 3000 series. Um, and so that's why they only offered it with the 4000 series. So I'm, I'm curious to see that. Email me a link to that. Um, frame gen will be, if we can get it in more games, it doesn't come... But if it doesn't come for ages, it'll be an issue. So uh, NVIDIA's already got it in 35 different games. Um, it's like confirmed to be in 35 different games, I believe soon. It's like actually working, I think in like 18 games or something. Uh, it's in like the teens now. 
but uh, 35 games have already agreed to do it, implement it. So I would expect it to, uh, I would expect it to be available in many more games eventually here. So overall, look at that. We're averaging 144. Well, it didn't start updating the average now. I don't know. We'll see what we averaged. But it's close to the free screen refresh rate here when we play Cyberpunk on low. 164 FPS on average in Cyberpunk on low with an RTX 4060. I mean, let's see what we get now with our, uh, our other settings, which was ultra, no ray tracing, no DLSS, and no frame gen. We're going to rerun that benchmark. Okay, so we're going to set everything to ultra again. All right, and then we're going to turn off DLSS. We're going to turn off frame generation. Cyberpunk on all ultra settings, no DLSS, no ray tracing, no frame gen. We're doing 60 FPS with 41 for our 1% lows. Pretty nice. Does the CPU pull 100 plus watts? Uh, so in Cinebench R23, Ky uh, Cairo Zokun, uh, we were doing, I think, around 80 watts, and then it throttled down to about 75 watts with very high CPU temperatures. We were thermal throttling, so not ideal in that sense, um, but you could obviously use something like Intel XTU to lower the power limit by like five to 10 watts, and you could get nice controlled CPU temps and still have very good performance. And we did about, uh, I think, 13,700 in Cinebench R23 for a 10 minute test, which is pretty dang good overall for multi-core overall performance. So, okay, so beautiful. We did 63.56, 63.56. Um, we are obviously running very high temps in this machine. You could tame them down with your own power limits. Um, and you could also get a laptop cooler to help keep these temperatures in check a bit better. Um, and obviously, repasting the CPU and GPU on this machine would also probably help a lot. Here we are, we've got DLSS on quality. Frame generation is enabled. I want to make sure we're on all ultra settings. We're, so we're on high quality ray tracing default. DLSS on quality and frame generation enabled. This is how we're gonna test this. If you wanted to return the Razer laptop to Razer, you could do it. Uh, that was a pretty big stutter we just saw, by the way. Interesting, interesting stutter. We're getting generally really smooth frame rates, but occasional dips there with like some stutters. I'm curious what's causing that. That may be our memory. You know, we've got a lot of different scenes being jumped between in this. And, um, you know, we only have eight gigs of DDR4, 3200 megahertz memory. And I'm guessing we're definitely maxing that out in a game like Dying Light 2, but we're still getting great frames. But I'm guessing as you move between areas, you may end up, you know, maxing out that memory. How much TDP is the GPU? We are doing 75 watts right here. You can see the TDP on the GPU. Um, so, and it's pulling 75 watts pretty much nonstop. No boost, no dropping. Um, we're hitting nice, consistent, like 45 watts on the, the CPU. And we're hitting a high percentage of utilization on the GPU. Uh, well, we're, we're hitting at least full TDP power limits and high levels of clock speed. Um, our, our GPU temps are in the low 80s, which is okay. It's not ideal though, right? Ideally, I think you want uh, below 80, like in the lower 70s, but uh, it, it's not terrible being in, the, in this 80 degree temperature. You're not thermal throttling on that GPU. Thermal throttling would be 87. So we ended up with 89 FPS, okay? 89 FPS with frame generation. Um, this, this result doesn't, it doesn't count the frame, uh, generated frames properly. So 89 FPS right here. Uh, we had our 2% lows, uh, two FPS for our lows because we had some pretty big stutters there. But our min FPS was 26, which is not gonna be quite as picky as our 1% lows. So in general, this is gonna be when it's not hard stuttering at least, we're doing 26. So um, very, very playable on ultra settings. So uh, Hogwarts is gonna be interesting because we only have eight gigs of RAM in this, in this system and Hogwarts will use all 16 gigs in a laptop. On my Razer Blade 18 and QHD at least, we're pulling 24 gigs of RAM usage and we only have 
eight gigs of system RAM in this laptop. So, I mean, we're talking about like less than a third of what the game ideally uses when it can use it all. So what kind of frame rate perspective? And I'm curious if we're gonna run into horrible stutters with this. I don't know, we'll see. We've got frame generation. We've got DLSS on quality, which means we're rendering at basically 720p resolution. Recommended is low, but screw that. We're going to ultra, except for our textures. We're going to set to low. Um, and we want ray tracing on, because why not, right? Screw it. Interesting. Okay, so I just reset it. Let's see. Now that I've looked around a little bit, let's see what our 1% low is going to be like. Again, every single thing is on ultra right now with this with this game. And we're doing 93 FPS in Hogwarts. All right, let's go to um, let's go to the Forbidden Forest. Okay, so we're definitely getting some stutters as the game loads in. That's expected when we only have eight gigs of RAM. All right. Oh man, we want 16 gigs of RAM. If you uh, unless you're okay with some stutters as the game loads in, I personally would not love that. I would definitely want no stutters, <laughs> personally, me, me personally. So definitely would recommend getting up to 16 gigs of RAM. Pretty sure that would fix the stuttering that's going on here. We could try everything on low settings too, just to give you an idea of what the upper end and lower end's like. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and reset this. So this is a new FPS counter. So again, everything's on maximum. We're on ultra with ray tracing on ultra too. So. I mean, it's impressive that at $1,100 laptops doing at least averaging over 60 FPS, I think that is an impressive feat in and of itself, okay? That said, we definitely still need more RAM. Let's see if we can fight something. I mean, you could play. I mean, as someone who's more casual, less picky, you could still play this game. I mean, it's not like it's an unplayable experience. It's just you got to be ready to deal with some stuttering, right? Like, it is... Far from the ideal play experience, and I would highly recommend getting upgraded RAM for sure in this laptop. If you're going to play complex new titles on ultra settings, I would say 16 gigs of RAM is the minimum you'd want. I usually, I, I usually kind of, let me just run up here real quick. I try to run through this area at least once ahead of time, just so the VRAM has a chance to grab all the textures. It's something I've been doing with the other laptops, so I might as well do it with this laptop because it'll definitely appreciate the help. So, all right, so here we go. We can tell that this is a very CPU-centered portion of the game because look at our CPU wattage doing 45 right now. Our GPU wattage, we're not hitting 100% GPU utilization that we can't see it. We're definitely not because we're only hitting 60-something watts, 58 watts there. So let's see what we get running up Hogsmeade here. Definitely have quite a few stutters as things load in. 68 FPS and 12 on our 1% lows. That's not very good for our 1% lows. Again, we really, I think, want to utilize uh, 16 gigs of DDR4 3200 memory at least, okay? Maybe even 32 gigs. Um, if you have the money, I would spring for 32 gigs. But um, I think that is probably the source of our stutters is most likely that maybe even these CPU temps could be causing some of the stutters as well if, it, if we're hitting thermal throttling. So laptop cooler, CPU repaste, those are potential options to help fix those issues. On this laptop, I wish it was better stock though. Like, you know, if you're just gonna buy this stock uh, and never change anything about it, it's it becomes harder to recommend this laptop for games like Hogwarts because this experience is not unplayable if you're not picky, but most people don't want to deal with stuttering, right? So that becomes unplayable for most people, I think, when you have stuttering like this. Um, and for anyone that was curious about frame gen performance versus no frame gen performance, let's try turning off frame gen for a moment and you'll be able to see. All right, so we were doing 60 something before and now we're doing 40, low 40s, 35, 37, 34. It, adding frame gen in, will take a gaming experience that this this is barely playable, maybe. Um, only eight FPS for our 1% lows. And 
when we add frame gen back, it, it bumps us up to like 60 something. And those are frames that you can see. And it's very, very few artifacts. It adds a slight latency delay and boom. Like I'm sure you guys can even see this. Yeah, and, and, and if, even if you disagree with me, that's fine. I think I think disagreeing with someone is is totally fine to me. Like sometimes things are gonna be worth it for some people and not for another's just because of uh, past experiences that they've had, right? Maybe you've had a bad experience buying a low-end budget laptop and you're like, I'm never gonna buy a budget laptop again in my life. Um, I would like to test this on low settings if we can with ray tracing off just to see what we get for frame rate range. Okay, so here we are on low. We're hitting over 100 FPS now. This gameplay experience is noticeably better. Oh man, I'm gonna die again. Our 1% lows are still not that good. I believe that's because of our uh, because of the VRAM, all right? Or sorry, not because of the VRAM, but because of the, uh, the only eight gigs of RAM. So once again, not an ideal playing experience, really not. I think these stutters are definitely causing issues for input lag. I would say it's not even that playable um, in combat. Uh, so eight gigs of DDR4-3200, I gotta, I gotta, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna change my, my mind on this one. I don't think you really want to play a game like Hogwarts with only eight gigs of DDR4-3200 performance. It looks like our, our power brick, is our power brick maybe overheating? Is that what is causing? I mean, it's kind of right behind the exhaust system. So, I mean, I'm guessing the power brick is just overheating. And so don't put the power brick it, right behind the exhaust. I'm gonna try putting it on the floor instead. Ha! The problem has occurred with your display driver, but I'm guessing that uh, me unplugging the power brick and plugging it back in is probably what caused the issue there to cause it to crash. But based on my initial experience here with this power adapter, it feels like this might be a power adapter issue. Ideally, even if the laptop exhaust is pointed right at the power adapter, you don't want the power adapter to be overheating. That's not a good sign. I'm curious if we're gonna run into this issue at all if the power adapter is on the floor. The power adapter is plugged in and yet we're still not getting any power to the laptop. Let me try unplugging it and plugging it back in. See, now we're plugged in. Isn't that interesting? This. This might be a fatal flaw for the laptop if, I guess fatal flaw being a deal breaker for me to be able to recommend it. If the laptop power brick cannot keep the laptop powered, that's no good. People have to buy an extra power adapter to go with it. That's not good. So need to keep doing some tests on this to verify, but let's see if we run into any more issues now that the power adapter is on the floor and it's not in the exhaust, the fan exhaust. I mean, that. I can kind of understand if it if it doesn't work because it's in the fan exhaust, that's not a deal breaker. You just got to not put it in the fan exhaust. But now that it's on the floor, let's see if we end up in running into any overheating issues. Shadow of the Tomb Raider at maximum possible settings. All right. Can we do it with eight gigs of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM? Um, and also, this is probably, you know, having low RAM speeds is probably going to negatively affect our overall frames in a game like Shadow of the Tomb Raider because it's a memory sensitive game that's sensitive to latency and overall memory speed. That said, with ray tracing on Ultra, we're doing over 100 FPS right now. Like what? That's pretty good. Is a 3060 8 gig good for 3D animation? I mean, I'm sure it would work for basic 3D animation, but we're using a lot of VRAM right now. We're doing 7.1 gigs on our VRAM. Averaging 90 frames though on all ultra in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, that's a good frame. I just <laughs> this is the first time I've sworn on the live streams after all this time. Dang. Uh no one heard that. Family friendly content. Family friendly content. <laughs> okay, so our overall combined TDP appears to be about 115 watts. Our average FPS so far has been 86. You know, the funny thing is, okay, uh the previous generation, like last year, one year ago, you look for a gaming laptop at $1,100. 
you're either going to be buying an RTX 3050, 3050 Ti, or maybe an RTX 3060. Those are, those are going to be your options, okay? This laptop, in terms of raw GPU performance, crushes those three options like crit, like like dramatically. If you want to play on everything on ultra, ray tracing enabled, all of that, okay? The thing is, you need 16 gigs of good memory if you want to be able to play without stuttering, at least in certain titles like Hogwarts, for sure. I'm actually tempted to like try to fix this laptop. Like what if I did like a tutorial on how to fix this machine and make it awesome? Um, like I buy the extra eight gig stick and then repaste this CPU and then redo all these benchmarks and see the performance difference. I'm thinking the performance difference would be pretty noticeably big um, in, in terms of FPS gains. Shadow quality is on ray tracing on ultra. Okay, so we got 85 frames per second. Do, do, do. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do ray tracing on ultra. DLS on quality. DLS frame generation on 1080p enabled. Let's see what we get. All right, so uh, usually Witcher has a lot of loading in issues. So we're gonna run around, get everything in the, get all the textures loaded in. All right. And so this is gonna be the Witcher, everything on ultra with DLSS on quality and frame gen. We'll turn those off uh, and do another run at 1080p. Here we go. So we're doing 60 FPS, almost on the dot. This game is gonna be very playable, even with only eight gigs of, of RAM. So that's so interesting. Certain games just chug like Hogwarts with only eight gigs of RAM and other games are freaking just doing awesome. So it really depends on the game in terms of how much RAM you need for a smooth gaming experience. 69 FPS, 69.39. So ray tracing off, DLSS off, no frame generation either. So still 59 FPS, 56 FPS. Interesting. Still very playable with everything on Ultra and no DLSS, no DLSS, no frame gen. If you were to flip on DLSS and frame gen with no ray tracing, then you'd be pushing like probably like over 90, maybe even 100 FPS. So I can try flipping those on and see what they do. Uh, we won't do a whole benchmark run, but 6348 for Witcher on Ultra. All right, so let's try flipping on DLSS to quality, and we'll flip on frame gen, but no ray tracing. Wow, we're doing 121 FPS now. So if you wanted a high resolution, super frame, uh, super high frame rate experience on this laptop, is certainly possible to do that. So with this $1,100 laptop, we're doing 120 frames per second. I feel like if you're willing to tune your laptop, you're probably gonna be able to get good frames in this, in a lot of games. We need to change some stuff. We want no V-Sync. Uh, we could go up to eight gigs on the textures, I believe. Everything else needs to be low though. All right, and so that's everything on low. Something with the power adapter keeps resetting and it, it went into no power adapter mode again for some reason there. I don't know why. Uh, we weren't even in a game load. So that is something that's a, an issue with this laptop that I want resolved before I can wholeheartedly recommend this laptop because that that's a non-starter, right? If the power adapter is, is cutting out on you, that's a non-starter for me. It makes it unrecommendable. Let's do max battery charge. I had it down to just go down to like 70% or something, but I'm just gonna set it to maximum. I'm curious if you were to set this to a lower power limit, if you would run into that issue. Because my guess is that since we only have a 150 watt power adapter, 
we're just tapping out the power adapter and the power adapter is overheating. That would be my personal guess right now about what's happening. So if you were to go in here and lower the power limits, uh, maybe in this entertainment uh, pro performance profile, you might be able to get it to work with the, the power adapter. I mean, picking up the power adapter, it's not really that hot anymore. So I don't, I don't know. I could just have a faulty power adapter. That's also an option. I, I unplugged the power adapter right now. I'm gonna plug it back in, watch the power limits on the GPU and see they're coming right back now that I plugged it back in. Let's see how long they can hold. Notice our frame rate here. Our frame rate is excellent. And this feels like a fairly responsive display with a little bit of ghosting, but not atrocious ghosting. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and see what we get for our FPS. Oh yeah, this display is going to be better for esports than what the Katana 15 was. I'm definitely not sensing as much of a delay for the input lag. I can aim just fine, but it is only 144 hertz, so 240 hertz is still better. Obviously, we're going to be able to push out the frame rates too to be able to hit that 144 FPS cap on the display or refresh rate cap. So. That's also really great. So to me, that means that this laptop is gonna be pretty dang good for an eSports player. Not amazing necessarily, because it's only 144 hertz display. Maybe you can get a 165 hertz if you spend a little more, or maybe even a 240 hertz if you spend a little more. But at least it'll be decent. And you'll have the, the fourth gen um, you know, RTX 4000 series GPU with it. Uh, 246 FPS on average. We haven't lost we haven't lost out on our power adapter again yet. That's good. Overall, this laptop is such a mixed bag for me, but as it is right now, I can't recommend it until we get some of these issues resolved, like with the power adapter. That's my biggest, that's my biggest deal breaker issue right now. I need to figure out what's going on with that. And if, if the power adapter is not powerful enough to actually power this system, then I mean, the only, the only possible solution in my mind is that Gigabyte starts shipping a more powerful power adapter with it. Um, I guess another potential solution, which is not great, is you could, you could limit the TDP on the CPU down to say 35 watts. And that would give us 10 watts of additional wiggle room. It would reduce our performance in CPU bound games, but not horribly so most likely. You know, if we did end up doing that, we probably wouldn't run into the power adapter issue anymore. Uh, one thing I will say is the keyboard is cool to the touch. WASD keys, everything is cool to the touch. The gaming experience is good in that sense. So um, there is no hot key as far as I can tell for sound. Right, I'm gonna turn up the sound so I can hear yeah, it's working. 300 nits is very low these days. Uh, yeah, 300 nits is low for a high-end laptop, but for budget, for budget laptops, it's actually not that bad uh, being 300 nits. I think 300 nits is the target if you're looking at a laptop under $1,200. If you're looking at a laptop that is, I mean, I need a site for my scout. There's a site for the scout. Let's go shoot some people now. We had like 130 and he had 175 health. So these speakers are not that amazing. Our frame rate is excellent though. 145. I'm being shot from multiple angles. Let's see if we can finish this guy. Yeah, finisher. Our, our frame rate was excellent. We averaged over 144 FPS. We haven't had the d adapter issue again. I'm, I need to play around with this laptop more to figure out what's going on with the, the adapter and uh, see if it's a cooling issue or if it's just not enough wattage in general or what. Uh, uh, well, gaming, obviously, it's gonna have sucky battery life because anytime you game, it's always bad um, in gaming laptops in general. But, um, but yeah, no, that, that should have some good battery life, I think. The 4090 is 80 TGP. 
Uh, I think the 4090 in the G14 goes up to 120 watts. I think it can boost that high at least. 40,000 series needs high TDP for high boost. Uh, well, it's interesting. The new ADA architecture does allow from, for at least good performance at lower TDPs. Would it be worth it to buy a Strix G18 4070? Yeah, it might be. It all depends on prices. But um, in general, I think the, the, the gap in performance between a 4070 and a 4080 is quite large. Uh, this year, just like it was between a 3060 and 3070 Ti, I think I think a 4070 is 1800 on the Strix G18. I think. Okay, so we got 9,000 for our GPU score, 8,719 for our CPU score. So the primary thing to keep in mind, right? A 3070 in a 4.2 pound laptop. What is that going to score? Obviously, a 3070 can go up to, uh, I mean, this is a 4060, so really we got to primarily be comparing as 4060s. But some, some 3070s would score around this range, depending on the lower TDP end. But a 3060 at 75 watts. On the RTX 3060 80 watt for $1499, two years ago, we got 7465 And in this laptop, for a 30... A 4060, 75 watts, only five watts difference. We got 15, 1600 more approximately on a 1600 increase. And let's just calculate that up. So that's a 21.3% performance increase, gen on gen, if you were to say these laptops are a fair comparison. The Zephyrus G14 is a little bit smaller a little bit more portable, even though it has a higher TDP. So, and it's obviously it's a more expensive laptop than what this one is. This one's $400 less with 21% higher levels of performance. Well, one thing I wanna point out is that if you go with a thicker, more, uh, more powerful 3060, like 130 watt one, say in a Legion 5, your performance is gonna be more comparable to this, okay? In terms of raw rasterization performance. Um, I'm pretty sure a 3060 can score at least 8,000 with a high TDP 3060. The $1,700 Legion 7, $1,700 Legion 7 from two years ago got 89.59. So almost the exact same score, but it cost $600 more two years ago. Nowadays though, something like that is gonna be priced pretty dang close to this. And the Legion 7 was a much higher build quality, better quality display device. I would say it's a better overall device than this one. So that's some things to keep in mind. Um, so if you can find yourself, snag yourself a deal on an old generation CPU 3060, that's a high TDP wattage for around $1,100. It's probably a little bit better deal than this. Um, you don't get frame gen, in terms of raw performance, though, it's going to be very neck and neck, very similar to this. Let's try overclocking this guy and seeing what we get. Now, so 3050 Ti, and we got 6,125. So this is 50% faster than that. So pretty interesting result overall. So it's a 50% tier on tier, but on gen on gen, with the same level of wattage, we were looking at 21% gain. Uh, in terms of time spy. And then if you factor in frame gen, obviously all the results and stuff go out the window. Let's go ahead and try to overclock this GPU. Uh, we'll try for a 150, 500. But yeah, so, so far I'm looking, I don't see any artifacting going on with our time spy window, so that's good. We're gonna shoot for a 200, 500 um, overclock. So we're gonna see if we're gonna be stable with this, we'll see. Okay, wow. We got a f almost 450 point increase by overclocking. 9490. All right. And uh, maybe we could even push that overclock a little further too. Let's go ahead and jump into the summary wrap up for this laptop. For a budget laptop, I like the build quality on here. The keyboard is nice. It's not the most amazing keyboard, but it's got great functionality, great layout. Um, and decent-ish backlight. It's a budget keyboard, though. It's not amazing necessarily, but it's good for the money. The display quality was like 260-something nits, not quite 300 nits. The 
The display response rate was pretty good though. You could play esports on this pretty well. The color gamut was also pretty low. It only at 61% on my Spider 5. In reality, it's probably closer to 70% sRGB um, if you're measured with another tool. So it's not awful on the display color gamut, but it's not amazing, right? It's it really there are laptops out there that have a lot better displays that are higher color gamut and brighter. So if you can, uh, if you're someone who wants a higher quality display, I say go for a different laptop that has a better quality display. If you're someone who's not as picky with their displays, this laptop display is not as awful. It's not awful. It's like, okay. That's what I'll say. It's okay. It's not good. It's not great. It's in the okay. I give it like a 5.5 out of 10 or something. So for the money, and I think an RTX 4060 is good value at $1,100. If you're gonna use this on an external display, awesome. Now, the touchpad here is a little more premium feeling than most budget laptops, I think. It's a nice shape and it's a nice size. It feels kind of like glass, but I'm pretty sure it's plastic. The laptop port selection is actually pretty good for a budget laptop. We've got, I didn't, I didn't go over the ports, so let's go over the ports. All right, so on this side, we have got a headset. On this side, we've got a USB 3.2, we've got a USB 2.0, we've got a mic port, and we've got a headset port, okay? And then on the rear of the device, we have our power port. On the rear of the device, we have our power port, our mini display port 1.4, which you're gonna be able to put um, high frames out to really big resolution monitors with that port. We have an HDMI 2.0, not 2.1, that's a little sad. Uh, then we have another, so we have a USB-C 3.2 there on the back, all right? So we have uh, one USB-C on the back, and we've got another one over here on this side. Now, this is, this over here is gigabit Ethernet, okay? So we've got one gigabit Ethernet, not 2.5 gigabit. Then we have a USB 3.2 on this side. Uh, so that's another high-speed USB-C. No Thunderbolt, though, okay? This is an i5 processor. And then we also have a micro SD card slot right here. So micro SD card slots are nice. Maybe if you need to transfer a lot of things from your phone back and forth from the laptop, but it's not necessarily as good as a full size SD card slot, right? But it's nice to have it if you, if you eventually need it. So the port selection on this, I think is pretty dang good for the money, but it's not amazing. It's like, uh, I, I can't remember what I rated it, but it's probably around a 7.5 or eight out of 10 for the ports. The portability on this thing is really, really good at 4.2 pounds. This thing is lightweight and it feels fairly sturdy. It'll go in a backpack bag and go with you easily. The power adapter. So the power adapter, we did show this earlier in the live stream, but it's very small, very, very tiny power adapter. Honestly, maybe even too small. It's only 150 watts. And we did run into issues where the laptop was plugged in and we were losing power. So either the power adapter was underpowered and it was like short circuiting, um, which could be happening, or it was overheating and needing to cool down. So if it was overheating, like it was right behind the laptop for a while, and I think that's what caused it to overheat. That's my current prediction that it was overheating. There's a few solutions you can use to solve that without getting a different power adapter. Like you could limit the CPU uh, power limit down by like 10 watts or so, or maybe even the GPU power limit by like five or 10 watts and you would be able to not have the power adapter issue happen anymore because it's right on the edge, it seems like. But that's far from ideal. You don't want to have to, to power limit your laptop further if possible, right? Because you, you end up losing a little bit of performance, probably like 5% five, 5 performance loss uh, from power limiting the CPU or GPU down a little bit more. So that's not what I want. That's not what I would like. But there are solutions without necessarily having to fully replace that power adapter. Now, as far as heating goes, we did see some high temps on the CPU. We saw some high temps um, on the GPU hotspot, but the GPU was fine overall for temps. It wasn't thermal throttling or anything like that, but the CPU was hitting very high temps to the point where it was probably thermal throttling sometimes. That might've caused some stutters. We did run into some stuttering with DD only having eight gigs of DDR4-3200. You definitely want 16 gigs minimum if you want a stutter-free experience in games like Hogwarts. So if you buy this laptop as it is, you'll probably want to repaste the CPU so your CPU temps go below uh, thermal throttling and you might be able to push the CPU performance a little higher. 
Our Cinebench R23 score was actually pretty good, I think, for an R5. Or sorry, for an i5. And we got like 13,800 for a 10-minute score on a budget CPU. I feel that was pretty good. But we were hitting thermal throttling the whole time. So you might want to power limit the CPU down to like 65 or 70 watts to prevent the thermal temps from going as high. Or you could repaste the CPU to get massively better temps. I'm guessing probably a 10 or 15 degree drop in temperatures if you did that. I think from a budget perspective, there are gonna be laptops that'll be a better deal out there. And the issues we ran into during today's testing leaves me with a sour taste. It makes it hard for me to just openly recommend this. So I need to find solutions for the problems I encountered during today's live stream before I can recommend this. So currently, I'm not recommending this laptop, but I think if the, if the solutions can be fixed, for example, primarily if I can figure out a way to make the power adapter not cut out on me at all, then that will help. The fact that out of the box, it cuts out on you is not good. And I think it's something that Gigabyte, uh, or in this case, Clevo, because Clevo is the original manufacturer of this laptop, needs to address, either in a BIOS update or a driver update or something. They need to lower the power limits on something in here, either the CPU or GPU, a little bit further to prevent the power adapter from going out, or they need to ship with a like 175 watt power adapter instead of a 150 watt. Those are the solutions to fix this problem. Yeah. The, 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 per, the kind of person that would buy this laptop is someone who's on a budget, like a college student, or maybe someone who wants something a little more businessy, because uh, this is a pretty businessy looking laptop, uh, but they want a game on the side. There are some really great things about this laptop, like the fact that it has a 4060 for only $1,100. Uh, $1, you can get a 4050 for $1,000, but I, I guarantee you, you're gonna wanna get a second eight gig RAM stick which is probably gonna cost you at least another $40, $50. And then you'll have to take it apart and put that in there. And then the CPU temperatures could probably be fixed by a repaste job. So if you're the kind of person who's up for all of that and potentially up for tweaking the power limits to get the power adapter to not go out on you, then maybe you could buy this thing and be very happy with it. But if you're if doing those things is like very intimidating to you and doesn't sound interesting to you, you want to buy a laptop that works perfectly out of the box, don't buy this laptop for sure. Do not I do not recommend it to anyone that's like that. That's a that's a default like do not buy for me. So right now it's like I've got like a caution sign that says I need to do more testing before I can recommend this. I got to figure out what's going on with it, but I think this laptop has tremendous potential still. I'm not necessarily saying that it's a trash heap especially since it does have a better display than what some of the MSI laptops are coming with. So those, that's kind of my summary. Yeah. So that's, those are my thoughts. I'm kind of repeating myself at this point. So I think that wraps up pretty much everything about the laptop for now. More testing required. And I'll probably do a follow-up video after I do more testing or do a follow-up live stream comparing this with something like the Lenovo IdeaPad 3 maybe. I'll see you guys in the next live stream. Thank you so much for tuning in everyone and be sure to subscribe for follow-up videos. I got lots of other laptops coming in. I'll see you guys in the next live stream. Thank you so much for watching. Brandon 